What up, you bitch ass niggas? What up, you real ass? Ni- ah, fuck that up. Let's start again. <laughs> what up, you bitch ass niggas? And what? You- <sighs> fuck. See, this is why I don't do the intro, nigga. <laughs> What up, you bitch ass niggas? And what up, you bitch ass bitches? And shout out to you real ass niggas and you real ass bitches. We back. This is cracking the eighties, crack, crack. and we yes, got. Sir. Praise the Lord. Osiris Lord. Osiris. Chopper zone day. You know what I'm saying? I like to do a bunch of sound effects and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> my nigga Osiris Lord is in the building. Shout yes, out to sir. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, man. You know Thank Lord. you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? It's building my confidence to to do my own podcast. You know what I'm saying? We got the Lord under the scope, but you know, my homies is inviting me over to crack in the eighties. Speak what I gotta Mike, say, you Mike, know what I'm saying? Mike, but Mike. anyway, anyway, before I go on a long cry right now about how the homies is helping me out, what are we talking about today, man? Hey, man, shit is good, though. But I mean, I, I'm I'm glad you did mention that because I always like to start these pods just checking in on the homies, checking in on my brothers, you know what I mean? You always like, got to, bro. You don't got to go too deep, just, how you doing, man? Are you good? Like, did she text you back? Did she didn't, <laughs> she didn't text you back? Like, you feeling good, man? Like... Listen. Did you did you, did you win? Did the bots beat you? Did you get that pair of kicks? The bots. <laughs> so, Listen, I be man. I be wanting to check in with the homie. So that's good. You doing good though, bro. That's yeah. what's up. You know, every day. You know I mean, every day you above ground and you breathing. You know what I'm saying? Is a is a good day, man. You know, all the money and cars and clothes and fancy stuff that everybody wants. You know, including myself. I'm not gonna lie. That's nice, but as long as we here and breathing, let's get it. Let's get to that bag. This nigga is so disrespectful. As y'all can see, this nigga is just being disrespectful on camera. He doesn't ever do shit like this. He must know that the show is recording and he wants to be a part of it. So I'm not even <laughs> yeah. going to I'm not going to discipline him and yell because it's going to fuck the pot up because it's going to fuck the audio up. So anyway, man, this is probably listen. something new that I'm going to have to deal with now. Listen, man, listen, be on the listen. Show. if y'all don't know, man, my man too. He fancy right now, you know what I'm saying? He got his new setup. If you're listening right now, if you're just hey, listening, man. you're not watching, you know what I'm saying? If you if you listen and keep listening, then go watch. Don't leave this and go watch. Word. But there is a video. Just know That's that we got video now. So yes, crack in the '80s is stepping they shit up. I want to start there actually. We could we we well, this part is gonna be a nice little talk about the city that we're from. Cause we could get into that. I mean, being from New York, just shit that we've noticed as we moved away from the city. Yeah, yes, we could kind of look from a third third party point of view and be like, "Yo, that city kind of crazy." But I wanted to start with just, I mean, I'm in a really good place right now, podding. Like you said, I got this video set up going on. I'm I'm still trying to perfect it. This is actually the first time I've tried to do it, so I'm still working on being on video doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's getting my setup so my, right now. My boy man. got a Rubik's Cube. If y'all still listen to the audio right now, my boy really <laughs> got a Rubik's Cube going crazy right now. All right, man. Yeah, my I'm phone, out here bro. like my, my nigga in pursuit of happiness. Like, he just pulled over the Rubik's Cube and was like, yeah, you know, life's really good. And I and I was getting, hey, nigga, and what I was getting at, this is all because of, like, shit, nigga, kind of, nigga, you started this, this, this new path of where I'm on with this thrift and shit, my nigga, like, no cap, like, I, 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 I mean, I got the motivation from the Lord, and I never look back, and shit, I feel like I'm living good right now, my brother, I got this new setup all from that, we all deserve from it, man. jumping you, into the reselling world. You deserve it, man, for real, because, man, listen, <clears throat> I started to think, yo, there's so much money in the world that is just there and existing, and you just have to get creative in ways to get it, you know what I'm saying? To like. get it. You have to think about it this way. You have to think about what do you want to do with your like not necessarily what do you want to do with your life, but how do you want to live? You know what I'm saying? I knew I kind of wanted to just chill, you know what I'm saying? Smoke, do what I do, hang out, you know, still have very productive days and things like that, but money is just a tool for me to get to do like where I need to get and to do what I want to do. And if I want to just chill and stuff, I need that tool, and if I need that tool, and I don't necessarily want to work for someone. I, don't get me wrong. I'll work with someone or if I work with like a business or a company that I've always wanted to or a sponsorship. Sure. But like I know that I don't want to like work under somebody, have a boss and all that. So anyway, I just 
like I said before, I just kind of was like, all right, there's so much things at the thrift shop that is not being purchased. And there was like, you know, the storage auctions and stuff. So anyway, that's kind of how it came with that. I'm not going to go deep into that again. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy when, you know, you can take one hour of your time, two hours of your time. Depends on what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like you can spend eight hours and make a bunch of money, but it's a blessing to be able to do these types of things, man. Just, just like the future. <clears throat> for for real, I do look at it as a blessing, bro. Cause like I said, from the beginning, I've probably I'm like probably like a month in right now, maybe like a month in a couple of days. Yeah. And shit, like, like you were saying, like you could you I'm able to use money as a tool now, just cause my income or the money that I'm making isn't coming from a service that I have to provide for this job exactly. that I have I have no attachment to. You know what I mean? I feel like with thrifting, it opened my mind on value, like my value system and what I give value to. Like, I could go to the thrift shop and cop a polo that in the store would be $60, but I could find it, get it there for less than $2 type shit. Exactly. So it really gave me perspective on like, yo, this polo is only valued like this because we give it this value based on the brand name. So, yeah, and a whole lot of that shit. But this pod... This pod in particular about New York, you heard? Well, I'm about to say this pod right here. I had to check in with this nigga. He, like I said, this this cat is wild. But this pod right here, we really just wanted to get into the city of New York, and this is gonna be a short, short, uh, short little clip of what we could really, how deep we could get with this with this topic. Pause. But New, New York, York City, man. New York City, bro, the city of gods, the motherfucking Empire State. This is a city where, like, and I wish the homies was here. Shout out to Drug, shout out to Mars. Shout out to the homies. This is a city, well, this is a city we all from, you know what I mean? But none of us are there anymore. (laughs) I mean, we grew up there, but none of us are actually present living in that city anymore. But I say that to say, I think I realized moving away from that city, it kind of allow me to look from a third point of view or a third party's point of view and realize like that city is is wild fam like (laughs) the way it operates is wild the way your condition there is wild the way your program there is is no other place i don't think on earth that's like that shit so i I wanted we wanted to just dig we wanted to kind of give you guys a little insight on to how New Yorkers feel about New York after we leave it. And we still love the city. I still love the city. It's my, I'm home. Always it's my love birthplace. New York, man. I'm going to always love East it New is. York. Word. I, and I wanted to mention, with that, I, with me saying that, a lot of the shit that we are conditioned and learned from there was a lot of good shit and why we were able to succeed away from that shit. So I I take it as a gift as an, and, a, and a curse. I'm not trying to shit on the city at all. I wanted to make sure we get that shit straight off the rip. But um, yeah, definitely, yeah, man. I, we we I, actually, I wanted to start with just like when, 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 uh, what if you could give the year or just what made you? I had two questions. Mm-hmm. What uh, what year did you decide to leave New York, and was it because of a specific reason, or an opportunity presented itself elsewhere? Okay, so one, well, first off. Everybody, if you if you don't know, um, you've been you definitely been listening to a couple pods. Um, I'm Osiris again. I'm from Brooklyn, East New York specifically. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Wyona. Um, so basically, one, I left New York, and when I made an actual conscious decision, like all right, I'm leaving, was 2015. 2015, I was like. To be completely honest with y'all, like, and it's, uh, you know, it's been seven years or whatever. I just, ba- and, you know, I'm not even going to get that crazy. I basically went out west to find connects. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went out west because I was like, I need to get gas at a good price. You know what I'm saying? So I went to go rub shoulders out west. And this is before, like, there wasn't really name brand, like, weed, nothing like that. This was, like, green capsules with weed in it that had dispensary thing on it that said medical and 
all of that. So, <laughs> nah, so facts. Yeah, the little, like it, the little just, medicine fucking capsule shit that you get with some prescriptions. Exactly. I should say John Smith on that shit with a little RX medical logo. Exactly. On that. Like you wasn't niggas thought that shit was the most gas, the fire. And sometimes it wasn't it was, even. though. It, Sometimes, sometimes, say, though, sometimes, sometimes it was. Word. I agree with you, bro. It was the fire, but sometimes it wasn't the fire. You know what I'm saying? But those times were different. 2015, I just knew, like, I don't know what it was. I think it was because I was heavy in music and all that. And I, I just was, like, tired of New York. And I was like, I need to get out west. And again, like I said, and I was also, like, consciously as, like, an adult, I had just went vegan, like, at that time, around that time. And I felt like mm. in California, I don't even know what we were using at that time. I mean, I'm sure we were using Instagram. We were using Instagram and stuff. But basically, like, something kind of made me feel like, all right, I need to go out west. So anyway, besides the packs, I knew that there was better air. <laughs> but I was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was just a bunch of things, bro. Like, honestly, I'm a type of dude, bro. Like, if I want to figure something out, I will Google it. So, like, I was just kind of like California versus New York. Literally. And mm. then it was like all Word. these things that were like, oh, California is this, California is that. You know, again, I love New York, but I've been there basically my whole life. And when I went to California, when I went to California, bro, I basically only went to go for three days and I literally ended up living in California. Like I never came back. <laughs> like I literally, <laughs> like yeah. I live, my homie, shout Word. out to Baby Moose, my homie Baby Moose, he invited me out there to california and he's like yo bro like let's do some music and i fuck with shit we have a couple projects out right now and all that but he yeah, was like pull up son. i got a space for you i was out there kicked it so boom i stayed that was the first time in 2015 that's the beginning i and mean what what i got from that like not to cut you off my nah, bad you good, but uh it's uh I, what i heard it was just basically like man you made the logical decision, which I tell I, everybody that's from New York that I that I move and I explain to them. Because, you know, everybody from New York, just to open it up, people that may be listening that aren't from the city, ain't from New York. People, when you live there, you are conditioned to think this city is the greatest place, which it is. Because, shit, every movie and TV show you see that is lit is filmed there. At least one episode or some shit, you know what I'm saying? So... You're conditioned to think like, yo, this is the greatest city. You know what I mean, we we love, but within that comes like another side to it that can be can be like detrimental to like a person's personality growing up. But anyway, it depends on what where, I was you know, saying. Like what you're saying, I agree with him. I agree with uh, Fatu for sure. Or like we like, we gonna we gonna get into that later in the convo. But what I was I wanted to make the point of uh um uh. When when you decided to move, you realized how society functions in a quote unquote normal city, and mm-hmm. basically you made the logical decision to be like, all right, let me take a pros and cons list. When you Google California versus New York, you made the decision based off of, all right, this is this is probably better here. This is there. This is this prices are kind of lower. It was an easy decision once you put it on paper. I think that's the one thing uh, New Yorkers are kind of stubborn and don't like to do when they're living in New York because there's so much opportunity and so much shit to do. You feel like, damn, I can't leave. I can't give this up. But the, on paper, it's a lot more simpler. Like when I made when I moved to Houston, the, the decision was easy. Like, of course, I had a lot of other uh, attributes and a lot of other things, variables at play that attributed to my decision but on paper the decision was simple bro i'm like rent is this here and rent is this here i right, exactly. i'm going <laughs> exactly it was that simple at one point after a certain time son yeah fucking it was just it was just literally like i'm very logical bro like we're very logical people and it was just it was also like i was i was getting to a point where it was like i need to like completely live on my own you know, and it's like, all right, now I'm looking for a place to live. At this point in time, I'm already kind. Con- I'm already moved out. Like, you know, what I'm saying, when I turned 18, I-, I moved out of my mom's crib. But I'm saying, like, at this time mm. is when you start realizing, oh snap! Like, I I legitimately can't even afford to like live in the hood. You know, like I can't even afford to live in my own hood like and when i was younger and 18 and 17 and all that and i was looking for apartments in east new york like my own hood 
it was like I'm nah, I'm not paying eight hundred for an apartment. Now it's like <laughs> 1500 one bedroom right next to where you know what i'm saying some weird stuff happened. he was lucky yeah yeah bro At that time but word oh, yeah bro for real so i did i definitely made the conscious decision i was just like all right let me i i think i first i was like thinking about moving to florida because i had more like resources in florida in miami but and then i was just like i'm going i'm going to california for a couple of days and i just legitimately never went back just never went back that's wild see i didn't even know that like that's something I just learned. But usually that's kind of how it works out and how it was destined to happen. Like, you got there and realized, hey, like, my lifestyle here and what I could potentially create, my chances are a lot better here. Than... Exactly. And I think the hard part for New Yorkers is leaving the, the like leaving it behind and realizing just because you move from there is, is not still in you. Cause you do once you once you get to another city and you're still yourself. If you remain yourself, you know what I mean, and you're solid with yourself and you know yourself, you can remain you. You kind of realize, oh shit, everything that makes me my personality. A lot of people from other cities attribute it to being a New Yorker, so it's kind of allows yep. you to kind of shine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, bro, you know everybody love a New York nigga. Listen, listen. Oh, when I went. When you go somewhere, bro, as a New Yorker, bro, everybody knows you're from New York, bro. Immediately. Facts. Like, the first week, I was just walking around in, in um, Los Angeles. I was walking around, like, if anybody here is from Los Angeles or familiar with Los Angeles, whatever. I was, like, around, like, Olympic Boulevard and, like, I don't remember. At this time, I was still kind of, like, wearing, like, I mean, I still wear a bait, but, like, you know, this is kind of, like, it G Ma, all the, like, the, like, SoundCloud rappers is wearing. So, basically, I just look cool. But I still look like a New Yorker, and people would approach me literally, right. like, "Yo, are you from New York?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, bro." Like, I would get interviews just as a human being, you know what I'm saying? Not even like, "Yo, this person knows right. I do music." He would be like, "Yo, you're from New York? All right, you look cool. Like, you want to interview?" I gotta and speak shit? to you. Yeah, that shit's that shit is really crazy. But um, I think people just are really afraid of leaving their comfortability because it's really mm-hmm. rough, you know. Like, especially if you don't have your your stuff together, you know. I don't want to make it seem like I went to California and I I just you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just balling. I had everything because I didn't. Trust me. Trust me. I, 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 I wanted to make that a clear. I wanted yeah. to make that clear, too, about when I moved to Houston. Like I said, mm-hmm. it wasn't it. Shit wasn't great. Like, it wasn't like I came here and I started thriving. But I I realized life works differently here as opposed to the lifestyle in New York. So for what I mean, so just to open the conversation up what I'm attributing when I talk about that is like. The day-to-day life of a New Yorker, right? Let's give you three examples. Stu- student, uh, adult working, and parent. Let's just go with those three off the top. So if you're a student, you typically you're not driving. You don't have a car because you're growing up in the city. You might be from Brooklyn. You might be from the Bronx, Queens, you know what I mean, Staten Island. And you're going to have to commute to your school. You know what I mean? Depending on where you go. Because in New York City, unlike a lot of other states or all other states for that matter you're not your schooling isn't dependent on like where your local school is it's like hey you get the opportunity to choose what school you go to based off this book we get and you have to apply for them shits like you're going to college and you know i'm saying like if you get in now you gotta commute to wherever this school is at you might be living in brooklyn in best or in far rock and your school you got accepted to is in fucking is uptown somewhere. You got to travel there every day. Yeah. So with, Yo, that's just with crazy. that come, bro, that shit is, that is nowhere else, my nigga. Like, no other city is like that. Every other city in this country, you go to school based on where you live. Mm-hmm. So you're growing up with motherfuckers that you typically know already because you've seen them around the neighborhood. New York, bro, depending on where you go to school, you seeing mad niggas from everywhere. Niggas from here, here, here. And then street politics could get involved and shit get a little crazy. So that's why New York, nigga, like, that's one instance. I said the school. So now you're an adult, you know what I'm saying? You might be in school, too, or you in college, you commuting. Because, you know, NYU is in New York. A lot of community colleges that are, like, pretty good schools. Shout out to NYU. Credit, uh, shout out to NYU. Shout out to John Jay. I went to John Jay. Uh, shout out to Mega Evers. Had to throw that in there one time. Hey, shout out Mega Evers, you know what I'm saying? But, um... As an adult, you might be going to school, so you commuting. I mean, you got class at nine in the morning. You got to figure out how to get 
to your class on time. So now you're an adult taking a train. You're seeing the same. And this is another thing about subway systems or public transportation in New York. That shit. And this is the crazy thing about this, bro. It's like, I don't think this is even normal. But you say you have a class at 9 o'clock. You have to plan ahead to know, I right, I got to get this specific train because my walk from out of the train to my school door is this amount of time. I don't want to miss this train because if I miss it, I know I'm going to be late. Because the train runs on a schedule. And I mean, it might be this train here coming at three minutes. Then four minutes later, another train. So you got you know down to the science which train you need to be on, my nigga. And even deeper, you know what train door you need to get on. Because when you exit, this is the quickest exit. This is the yeah, least. I want to be right this here. This is the right tra- least traffic. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to get in, get out. Boom, I'm right here. Or I'm on this side of the street. It gets deep. Like, that level of thinking just to travel, I don't think exists anywhere else, bro. I never really thought of it like that, bro. Because sometimes when people are confused about how to travel on the train in New York, I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, why are you so confused? I'm like, this is so simple. Sorry, everybody. If you're listening, you don't know how to take the train. I'm sorry. But I'll be so confused when people be like, yo, I got to take this to local. Follow the fucking map. Exactly. It's like literally just go like like, this. Yo, follow the fucking map, son. Look at the colors. Look at the train. Look at the letter and follow that shit. It's crazy. But nah, bro, that shit is... For us, it's second nature. Like, we've been doing this shit since children. Yeah. That's another thing that's wild about that city. Like, you see children just on the streets by themselves in groups. Like, groups of children, nigga. Packs of these niggas. Nah, Four, facts. five, six kids at a time, Especially nigga. in the summertime. <laughs> Bro. They probably outside remember, right now playing with the fire hydrant. <laughs> I was going to say, these niggas <laughs> is out now. School, school is finished if they was going, but they out now. Shit. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say... Uh, my first, so when I moved to Houston, I, uh, it was crazy. You said you moved from New York, 2015. I moved the same year, nigga, 2015. That's, it was wild. Like I wanted to mention that, but uh, that's the year, bro. I that was a good year. Great year, bro. Like I think that's why. I, like, anyway, so 2015, left the city. I was in a relationship at the time. That's what attributed to helping me even move to Houston, and not attributed in terms of like financial, but I had the reason and uh, purpose to be somewhere else at the time. You know what I mean? So that yeah. happened, moved to Houston. And from then, I just realized, like, yo. And I had been to Houston prior. Like, I would come here for, like, shows and a couple of other things. But coming back and started living here, I was like, yo, okay. This city is different. Like, it's a lot slower pace. There's a lot more space. People aren't piled up on each other so that new york city angst that everybody has is not present anywhere but i say that to say so in my that relationship i was in back then we took a trip to new york you know what i mean like new york is lit shorty wasn't never been to new york never really been anywhere and you know what i'm saying go to new york and we out there we in soho i think i think we was getting some ice cream or some shit or like somewhere in nail canal well, I, what kind of ice cream you got Shit was amazing, bro. It was like waffle cone, but it was an actual like Belgian waffle that niggas pressed up, then folded what? up, put it in. And that, it was it was you said good. by canal. Mad toppings. It's near canal. It's near the park, but canal. You know what I'm saying? Where like if you passing through there, it's like one of them fork roads, and the the, the park is in the the middle of the fork, and it's a oh, lot I can't of you're talking about. it's canal. So it's like it'd be a lot of groups of Asian people, older Asian people doing they uh. They, uh, and I mean, they therapeutic little um, exercises and shit. Yeah, that's it's, it's around there. But um, and we was just walking through the city, and uh, she noticed like kids just out by themselves, and it was so foreign to her. She was like, "Yo, where? Like, <laughs> what are they doing? Like, what are they doing out here by themselves?" And I was just like, "Yo, what the fuck you mean? Them niggas is living. Like, they lit. They out yeah. chilling. Like, they got their crew." But to her, she was just like, yo, where are their parents? Like, why are they just out here by themselves? And I didn't probably notice it then, but it was probably the first inclination of me realizing, like, yeah, see, this city ain't normal, son. Like, yeah, <laughs> that f- is foreign to her. But to me, it's so common. I'm like, yo, I was that nigga, like, <laughs> a few years ago. You know what I mean? Like, out just on the streets. Yeah, a lot of people are just kind of like, what? Word, like other cities, you don't just hang out on the streets, like literally. Actually, not really like California, like that. You'd be the only you person walking out on somebody's for... stoop. Nah, I word. Don't know. 
You're the only person in, in, in other cities, you hanging out in somebody's crib. Niggas got cars, so y'all niggas might be chilling in the car, smoking. Word. Y'all niggas just, y'all have access to get where you need to go from, like, high school. New York, nigga, like, you on public transportation, like. Listen, when I came out west, I still don't even have a driver's license, man. I'm about to go get my driver's license this year, but I don't, listen. I got, wherever I go, hopefully they got a train. Las Vegas actually doesn't have a train, but in Cal, when I was actually in, like, um, SoCal, like, they got a train. That shit is easy. That shit is a piece of cake, actually, but but Mm. it is because, 100%, because I was in New York. 100%. Because I read that shit. I be mm. telling people how to, like, they be from California. I be like, man, you got to take the red line to the purple line to overhead. They be like, what? I'm like, You just yeah. know how to read that shit. It's common sense to you at this point. Yeah. That shit. And I remember, like, when I moved to Houston, I had homies that went to New York and knew I was from the city and would call me, like, when they there, like, yo, bro, I'm on this. I'm, my bad. Like, I'm out here trying to get to this spot and I'm on this train. I don't really know how to read the map. You can help me. And I was like, yeah, what's the address? Boop, boop. You take that. Boom, here, here. And he was like, yo, how you figure that out? I'm like, nigga, don't worry. Just do that and you good. <laughs> like saying, like, you straight. Yeah. I ain't never even been to that spot you going to. But nigga was like, yo, you been here before? Nope. I never seen that. I don't even know what that street looked like. I know how to get there, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's a blessing, so, bro. It's a blessing. But, you know, like, blessing, you, like I said. Like you said um, about the thing, like, I want to just add on about, like, when I left. New York, like you said, the the angst and like the the uh, when I went out Word. west, I met a bunch of people and they weren't they weren't like oh, I don't think we're hyper as New Yorkers, but I I think you know we're always pretty much ready to do something, to like yeah, hustle. We, we, we have we have a defense. Me- I think it's like all of a is a defense mechanism, bro. Yeah, because my homies be all looking all funny that. over here when I be doing certain <laughs> shit. They be like, bro, calm down. I'm like, bro. Relax, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, what you mean? This is like, I'm normal right now, bro. Like, this dude over here looking no, weird. Wrong. You get, you... Do you get that, too? Like, you move from, to, from New York to another city and niggas be like, yo, what's up, son? Hey, yo, B, what up, my nigga? I'm like, yo, son. Like, I, I don't really like get that. that. But relax, bro. We at, we at work right now, bro. Relax. I, you know, I think, <laughs> like, I think it's... I think it's only because, like, like when I'm around my friends and they're also from New York, I feel like people do that to them. But I think that the way that I present myself and I speak all the time, like, people don't really, like, they might hear, like, oh, he's from New York. But they're not going to be like, yo, what's up, my God, blah, 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 unless they know me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that is how I talk and shit, but I'm just saying, like, for the most part, I'm very, like, calm, cool, and collected when I'm just like meeting somebody and shit. So like they don't they wouldn't just be like, yo, yeah, what's up, man. B like peaceful. Also, I would tell them don't do yeah, that. Nah, it's, <laughs> hell yeah. It's it's typically the niggas that be like, you know what I mean, niggas it's always that one person that wherever the setting is, you might have met them for the first time and you've been around them for thirty minutes now and they find out you from Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. get too you're comfortable. Right, you're right, you're right. And they like, yo, what's up? So it's like hell it's usually no. that. It's always that nigga everywhere. Uh, I mean, maybe if I think back, I, I'm sure I got that. I, I mean, maybe not like that, but like more so like, yo, you got Tim's or like, yo, you got a Yankee fitted or like, like, you know, like, you know, some weird shit like that, but not necessarily like, yo, what's up? And I, like I, I think that's where the New York bias and New York arrogance come from, because it's like everywhere you go, that's like you said, when you go somewhere and you from the city, niggas know you from the city. So I feel like the fact that we could go somewhere different and niggas can guess where we from within two guesses usually the first that just improves more into my theory like that city ain't normal we may think that's cool but somebody shouldn't guess where you're from when you go to a different city just off the rip like that's not it's, normal it's not normal <laughs> it's, it's it's like annoying but like you know it's so crazy that like when we go somewhere at least me i'm sure you this happens to you too but you can tell when somebody else is from New York, you know what I'm saying? You just it's from hell, Yeah, you'd be yeah. like you they'll like randomly later on you'll find out. You'll be like, Yeah, I knew you was from New York. You said this, this nigga, you could, look this way, you did confirm. this. <laughs> like you're like, Oh no, nah, you're from New York. All of the fucking if it it, it breathes, it smoke it smells and looks like a motherfucking <laughs> yeah. New Yorker, nigga, it's a New Yorker. I knew. I couldn't confirm, but I knew, nigga. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I fucking love to see, man. But I you know, like like I said earlier, when you get older and fucking not older but you know like you just start thinking more like more mature you get, you get more mature you get i don't your, say older it's, to your it's big more age mature. You, like, you get to your big age your big age <laughs> anyway you get your bigger you get to your bigger age 
you get, you get to, to your, your bigger age. age. I'm almost at my bigger age. So anyway, I was just like, this is literally logic. It's logical to do this. And again, like I needed that. I needed to be away from like feeling like I have to go out or if like Tom, Dick and Harry hit me up like, yo, let's go do this. I got, uh, you know, bottles. Ah, ah, like, Fucking you know. hamster wheel of the city, bro. Like oh, yeah. the ongoing circle of what occurs in the city you can find something to do all to, times bro exactly which is good and which is could be very bad yeah because it's distracting bro. Like, it's super distracting yeah. it's like all right i should be doing whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing productive or schoolwork or whatever your homie is like yo pull up i got such and such let's do this i got the whip you are likely to be like, you know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. Other I was shit. about to say, don't don't let your homie or you have the whip and they pulling up. You exactly. don't even got a question if you going or not. Exactly. You like word, All right, I'm there. You pulling up? I'm exactly. coming outside, nigga. Let me get ready. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm out there, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm sure. Like, sorry to cut you off, but like, I'm sure. Like, it's like because I'm out there, my homies, um, Steve and Wes, like they always be on some like, yo, let's go do this again. I enjoy I it and Steve I'm happy, West. but. Niggas be like, yo, let's go to the hookah spot. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Fast and I'm like, pace, damn, bro. nigga, I feel myself getting trapped again. Shit is so fast paced. And like I said, in their lifestyle, is is just normal to them. That's just how the city functions. Yeah. It ain't even nothing wrong with it. That's actually how the city. And that's the thing, too. Like, that lifestyle of doing, like, that much shit in, at one, in one night or just one weekend. Bro. Another, uh, like. People, see, especially now with social media, niggas see other people from the city doing that, so they feel like they gotta compete or more inclined to yo. They it's lit, it's mad shit to do out there. What the fuck I'm doing home? Let me go up. Let me get. Let me go outside. And like you said, it's just it could be a distraction. Yeah, it's 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 super distracting, bro. It's so many times that I should have been doing one thing that I just ended up doing the other. You know, just because somebody was like, yo, I got a bottle, or like, yo, just. Let's smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, yeah, fuck work. I mean, I never really did that. But, you know, like, another person might be like, nah, fuck that. I ain't going to work. My homie just said he got an eighth. You know what I'm saying? Like, he said, you know. And if you can afford it, the thing about New York is, like, if you can afford it, it's okay. But, like, when you can't afford it, you still be bugging. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got the money to start bugging now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you just always out. What Kanye said? Kanye said, yo. New York, you got to be, I forget what the line is. I'm going to butcher it. But he's like, yo, New York, don't you know you got to be rich just to be poor there? Exactly. And that's facts, nigga. Like, you got to be a nigga making good money just to survive in the city. Bro, you got to make, like, five figures to just function as a human being. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to just function yeah. as a human being, no problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, no complaints. I'm paying my bills on time. I'm paying for the train. I got groceries. You need to make at least five figures, bro. Bro. Yeah. And I don't know where you're going to find that job at. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard to find jobs nowadays out there. I'm about to say, Unless you're man, doing something it, like grunt work. To this deep... Oh, you in the streets, nigga. Exactly. And I'm not really, man. I'm not really, uh, you know, pushing that or nothing but that that's nah, why so many people get in trouble that's, that's why that's why people be in trouble and that's also like that's another reason why people leave new york because it's like if the only way i can survive out here is by doing something that i shouldn't be doing why should i be here when i can go find somewhere that i can get a whole house for 800 bucks and some you know like some random state and have a really good job because i have new york experience Shit, yeah, I feel like you're lucky and blessed if you can get to that place and understanding of knowing that. Because I think just to kind of uh, take this to a different place about the city, just I think that's why the music and drill music and just the culture of the city now, the city is a wild place now, bro. Like, this shit is like the Wild West. Shit is like Gotham City. It might be worse than that shit. But I think it's all attributed from that same feeling of, yo, this is what's working right now. This is what I got to do to survive in this city. Yeah. I got to do it. Fuck it. I ain't got no other way. This is the way. Yeah. I don't know, bro. It's like, I love my, I love New York. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's really difficult, I, bro. I, like, I, it, it gets like it's, love and hate, bro. Like, str- not hate bro, being there, but damn. 
Shit it's rough tough, sometimes, bro. Like, bro. Shit's I be rough. dealing with that nowadays, son. Like, cause nigga, you know, no matter what, to the death, I'm a, sh- I'm a always put New York first. Like to this day, like me and my shorty, now uh, we fucking, I, I constantly find like we might be watching TV and it be might be like a movie we watching it come up. We never seen the movie we watching it for the first time and it be like New York, 1975, and I'll be like, yo, you see that? Where they at right now? Yeah. Like, where they at? This is I never seen this movie. You never seen oh, but they in New York though. Like we lit. That's yeah. why they in New York. Like so, I still got that in me. Like that's why I feel like n- n- people fuck with New York niggas. I don't give a fuck where you at. Niggas is gonna fuck with you. Yo, like. you ever you ever noticed this before, bro? Sorry to cut you off, but you ever noticed that like in in movies when they're in like New York City, it's always Hoyt and Skimmerhorn. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> it's like Hoyt and Skimmerhorn, nah. and it, it's it'll be like a different name. It'll be like Dylan Street. Uh, Irving Street, bro, but it's always Hoy and Skimmerhorn, bro. What the fuck is a Skimmerhorn? I don't I always, know, bro. That's the street I, I always get lost on. I never heard that word anywhere else. Nigga. And I think no it's Skimmerhorn. It's Skimmerhorn. It, 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 it is Skimmerhorn, but niggas say Skimmerhorn. Nigga. <laughs> the nigga on Kaskiasco. the train, the nigga on the train announcing the stops, announcing the stop say Hoy and Skimmerhorn. Nigga. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. That's the wild thing too, bro. Like I said. Just getting back to this. I feel like we could have just talked about the subway this episode. And honestly, I don't want to go no further with the comments about the drill and all that shit. But this train is a wild place, nigga. Like, mm-hmm. to the point where, like I said, you getting on this same train both ways. Like, you getting out of work the same time and you going to work the same time. So you pretty much, unless you're doing something extracurricular after work, going to a bar with some friends, you got to pick up some shit. You're going to be on that same train, so you run through the same conductors, too. You run into the same passenger. That's what I was getting to earlier. I don't think I mentioned it, but you take that same train. You're seeing the same niggas. You're seeing the same passengers yep. in the same seats. Bro. So it becomes normal, but that shit ain't normal because you're on a train with hundreds of people at one time. But because y'all create this little community or this little curated, and it's not like that... Is assigned seats. Niggas just pick their seats based off who get on the train at what time. Oh, she goes to that seat. I know I don't want to sit there because that's her seat. It ain't her seat with her <laughs> so name, fuck. but niggas know that's her seat. Yeah, nah, you know I know exactly what, I mean? what you like, mean, yeah. It you better look at niggas like, with... damn, bro, you know I sit at this train, I mean at bro. this seat at 8.07 a.m. every day, bro. You know I do that, bro. Every day. Why are you going to... Or it could be a little shorty and she sit there and you're like, oh... Alright. Nah, bitch, get out of my fucking seat. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shorty move, bitch. I'm tired. I got crust in my eye. I ain't no breakfast. And I ain't I ain't study for this seat. test. I ain't study for no. this test. Move, bitch. <laughs> nah, that's facts. Oh, and man. and all of that shit is normal in the city. Oh, know what I mean? Shit. Like imagine that. You wake up pissed off and you got a train that's delayed. Now you, bro, it's yo. We, we got now. We got to talk but about. We got to. We, we got to have an episode where we talk about the train, bro. Yeah, we gonna cut We got to talk about school talk. metro cards, bro. We got to talk about police at the train stations. We got to talk about popping doors, train. nigga. We got to talk about mm. turnstiles that go the opposite way so you can get them for free, nigga. I got mad sauce, boy. <laughs> Sorry, Man, I got mad loud. Nigga. My fault, everybody. But yeah, yeah bro. But I, nah, I, nah, it's gonna if go. y'all don't we know, bro, get that full pod. If y'all bro. everybody don't know, I don't drive. I mean, I can drive, but I don't have my license, so I don't like drive, drive. Especially not in New York. But I'm saying, like, I walk yeah. a lot and I take the train, so like, I know all about. I've been yeah, taking the train since 2000, I think. <clears throat> As a kid, bro, like a kid, I used to go to West Fourth Street bro. when I was like nine, bro. I went to like Scratch DJ Academy, like I'm about to say shit, word, bro. bro that, yeah. It's normal. That shit yeah. is normal. As it, a it's kid. crazy because like, it's not traveling normal. on your own. Yeah. It ain't normal, nigga. There ain't no reason why a child nine, ten, eleven, twelve, even thirteen, maybe, should be on a train by themselves. But in New York City, nigga, by thirteen, we you grown. done seen a lot of shit. Yeah, we grown. Bro. You ain't grown, but you experienced. Right. You know you got. You know how to survive, but um. Yes, sir. This is a nice place to end this right here. This new bonus with the visual. You know what I mean? It's that crack, crack, crack. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had a really good time on this on this episode, man. It was really nice to talk about New York. It was really cool that you got your setup. (laughs) Yeah, I'm high. I actually, I want to see. How this shit look, I'm going to get mad clips and all type of shit from this. Just 
And like I said, bro, I'm going to get this shit nice and so I'm going to get like a neon light. I'm thinking about mad shit. Like I said, I got, I'm going to show you when we get off air, but I got, I got this like little couch over here that I want to have guests where I can not mean move the mic like this. Yeah. Typically, I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to get a second mic. So it's just positioned there. But let me go ahead and take I'm us out of here man. so we can get. Yo, Craig, nigga, you see me trying to end the pod and you've been, you sitting over there on your ass. Get the fuck up, nigga. We trying to leave. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, all right, cool. All right, yo, everybody, y'all niggas, get the fuck up out of here. Y'all been here. Y'all been listening to us talk. Shout out to y'all. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. That really helps us. Lord under the scope, cracking yep. the 80s on every platform. Just make sure if y'all, you just pick one. You ain't got to pick all. Pick one and just make sure you rate and like leave a comment. And Patreon coming YouTube, soon. Like, Patreon are coming real soon. But if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. We do really well on there. And all of that helps us to bring this shit to you guys. So, it's cracking the 80s. I'm with my nigga Osiris Lord. I'm your boy 5'2". I didn't introduce myself, but I thought maybe you might have known who I was. But for you new people, I'm 5'2". This is Osiris Lord. This is cracking the 80s. Lord under the scope. We out of here, we man. Out. They know who he is. Cheer. Crack.